Welcome to PartialArc.com. <laughs> Don't do that. Previously, on Friday Night Quests. With a large company of criminals and worried family members in tow, our heroes have crossed the wilderness to the desert city of Matet. But what strange sights and secrets lie behind the city's walls? Rising up out of the sand ahead of you is a gargantuan stone sloping on one side into the sand, the other rising up into a sort of precipitous cliff. On top of this, you see this wooden structure, this city stacked on top of itself, like these overlapping layers. Welcome to Matet. Does it look like a giant, like, it's wood everywhere, so does it look like a giant, like, fort or like a treehouse? Like- a, a little more like a fort, okay. yeah. These wooden walls, essentially. Okay. Hmm. How high up does the city start? Uh, probably about 60, 70 feet. Okay. Up the, up the builder. And then how cool. high does it go up beyond that? Uh, probably about 50 feet in total is the city itself. Mm. Okay. So compared to the city we just left, how big is You left a village. Uh, you essentially left Frontierland from Disneyland, mm-hmm. and you're now looking at Disneyland with California Adventure stacked on top of it and Downtown Disney stacked on top of that. Thank Uh you so much for telling me in ways that I can understand. I think that's something that everyone listening around the world will definitely identify is the size and shape of Disneyland and its various subsidiary parks. And its exact circumference. Actually, the uh, campus of the University of Southern California is the same size as Disneyland. Is it really? Hmm. Yes. Oh. Yeah, I mean, it's not that hard to walk from one end to the other, but if not for the urban crawl in Matet. Hmm. How far away is it from us? Are we close? I walk from one end to the other. <laughs> <laughs> you are nice day. <laughs> you are riding up to it right now. So you see this looming ahead of you in the distance. You're like an hour away from it. Oh. What What do we know about Matet? Is there Rural like any insight? Like, oh, <laughs> Sick <laughs> insight on this city. <laughs> um, based on what you've heard so far, you know it's the capital of the Huang Barony. Hmm. Okay. I mean, do we Do we know any like? ins and outs like what does it produce like uh anything um, it's known for in particular yeah you guys can roll history checks except for ivy <laughs> that's a natty 20 nice that's 16 for me nice 15 uh you know a couple of things you know that they are known for salt trade hmm. um they are actually built on top of a you're walking into a salt flat essentially whatever this area used to be was not always desert um, I licked the question, ground. Question though, if we're walking into a salt flat, why is there a hill? That's a great question. That's exactly. This shouldn't be this way. Mm. You think this oh. is one of the strange oddities? Like some of the one of the things that happened after the collapse is there were a couple places where geography just got buck wild. And I like the sound <laughs> of that. Like there's some places where like, oh, you know that um, <laughs> that city? It's a desert now, <clears throat> um, which is kind of scary. Um, and in fact, that's not too far south from you. But the real estate options are <laughs> stupendous. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, there's this boulder emerging out from what presumably used to be a lake or some sort of seabed mm-hmm. and is now salt flat and then desert. Okay, oh. well, we're here. Right? You also know a couple of things. I would say Phineas and Althea. You know that they have an arrangement with fire giants to help facilitate transport across the Karosi Desert to the south. As in, like, riding on the backs of fire giants? Yeah, that's that's the best you know. Describe fire giants. Uh, they are roughly 30 feet tall, okay. and they came, They heavily populate the plane of fire. Uh, oh, okay, cool, cool. Not cool, exclusively, cool, cool. but heavily. I'm sure that in the fire plane, we would use that for transport a no. lot. No. Absolutely not. Oh. They are a culture that you were at war with. Oh no! This is this is. I mean, a, I guess you could use them for transport if you were mean. <laughs> this is a race that would never stoop to such levels. The idea of you riding on their backs is absolutely absurd. Okay, but the, okay, I would just like to point out that like 
me, Hillary the player, is just finding this out now. Yes. And Althea made all these decisions. I think that you have heard the description of the city, and now you're like seeing it. You're like, oh, I've heard of this place. Oh, you didn't recognize the name gotcha, to the place until gotcha. you actually saw, like, oh, there's a desert to the south. And actually, one of the things that you notice, and actually this is probably how you make the connection, is you see far in the distance mm-hmm. a silhouette that must be a giant walking across a desert towards Matet and trailing off of its back almost like a like a balloon off of a backpack you see this hot air balloon just trailing behind oh, yeah. the do fire you, giant do you tie balloons to your backpacks <laughs> do you not <laughs> i i i'm a I, people i'm very what popular. if you lose your backpack oh there it is so, the balloon. <laughs> it's the best way to get it through tsa and make sure that you know mm. also the most adorable way to get it through and you've got like a little so, old man too who like walks <laughs> so as we walk up to Matet, Althea, I'm realizing this, mm-hmm. and um, I'm going to tie my hair back as like tight as I can, and then put my hood up as far over my hairline without it being conspicuous and making me look shady as mm-hmm. I possibly can, does, and like trying to cover as much of my skin as possible. Does any of us see this happen? She's not trying to hide it from you guys, and I think. Probably, yeah. I would probably say, like, guys, that's a fire giant. My people don't really get along with them. Can we please not bring up the fact that I'm a fire genasi? Yeah, I think we could probably exclude that. What's a fire genasi? Just don't. (laughs) Just pretend you never heard that word. Done. Ivy, great. Just so you know, that's a primary means of transportation out of the city, like... Are you okay being near fire giants? We might need to you uh, just know, as utilize long as one. they don't know what I am. I should be okay. Although it's really weird that people would be riding them. Like there are people, okay. Like I don't particularly like them, but they're a proud people. Hmm. I mean, apparently they're. I assume they're okay with it. Uh, otherwise, I don't think they're subjugated here. Are you? Sure? Are you sh- sure about? I that? rolled a natural twenty. Are they subjugated? Ooh. You've heard mixed feelings about mm. that. The people of Matet say no. I've got a very good feeling that they're not subjugated. <laughs> you have not heard any reports from fire giants Fair. on this subject. And you, with your natural 20, that's conspicuous. Mm, okay. If I were paid fairly, I would let somebody ride me. Wink. Good, good for you. I mean, how much are we talking? Five gold. What kind of riding? Mm. <laughs> you mean front of body versus back of body? <laughs> like Baby Bjorn style? Like Baby Bjorn baby riding born. style? <laughs> I would let somebody would be in somebody my baby Bjorn. Would somebody Google, the, is the baby Bjorn facing towards you face to face or away from you? <laughs> of course face to face. Face, face to face is cheaper? Yeah, face Sounds to face very, is much cheaper. Sounds very intimate. <laughs> Just one inch away from you for hours. <laughs> that way we can talk while we travel. <laughs> Okay, that sounds lovely. Just nose to nose, just nose tip to tip nose. there. I want them to be able to feel my lips moving as I speak. Just legs wrap around you, like just... L- legs rapid. That's what we call it. And then I can feed them travel snacks <laughs> with my own mouth. <laughs> I want to see Abby do this. I can baby <laughs> travel bird. snack time. Baby bird them. I'm some just like crackers. feeding you good berries. <laughs> <laughs> sounds very comforting. <laughs> Five gold. So, um, if you guys are keen, I, I mean, we... my fish hooks. <laughs> oh, we should make our way into the city. I mean, we have to meet up with this, you know, the the local justice, so we can finally get this ice knight oh, off our backs. Oh, that's right. Okay. Um, mm-hmm. can you let me know, like, we're at a point, like, when it's clearly like above? Because I'm assuming if we're far enough, it mm-hmm. still looks kind of small, right? Yeah. You probably we can cut to that point as okay. you're as you're getting within. You know, 300, 400 feet, it's looming higher and higher Wait, over you. It is, it is getting bigger. I turn to <laughs> Ivy and I say, what did, what did, what happens when you walk towards something? I don't know. I just, I, I, I've not, I just assumed it was just like a small, it looks, it's coming. What's the biggest thing you've ever seen, Ivy? Um, I like turn around and like, do you see any like large trees? Yeah. Uh, not not near you anymore. Now you're in the salt flats. Yeah. But you can see them behind you. Okay. I turned out. I probably went. Like, I'm like, I went and saw a tree that was twice, and I pointed at, like the biggest one, the size of that one. Oh. 
cool, 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 cool. So cool. let's head I, into about 10. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I am aware that things get larger as you walk towards them, but that seems to be very large. Yeah, it's like the largest thing times five you'll ever have seen. I can I can wait out here. No. No. No, you should come in. It, it'll be fine. Come with us. Are you afraid? I, I turn yes. to like the rest of the group and I go, yeah, she's fine, right? And Perrin's like, I mean, if, we, if we want to turn back, I don't think that's... I'm Perrin, not you shut up. Nobody asked you. Thank you very much. You guys can see Ivy just shaking slightly. Oh. Ivy, what is it about this city that makes you nervous? The city makes me nervous. Is it because of its size? Because it's so many? Yes. Okay. Well, there's a lot of people in there that feel the same way. So... How it, many people? Phineas, do your, th- do your like, convincing magic no. thing. There, there are, no, there, no, no, There no. are more people? Yeah. We just there, came from a city with people. Right. Well, there's a bunch of people in there that they wake up every day, and there's a lot of people around. They don't, n- not everybody in there, they don't know anybody. They barely know any of the people in that city, just like you. This sounds awful. Well, it is. This is an opportunity for you I, to meet as many of those piece, people as possible. I can, I can, and I sit, I, I climb off my, I climb off Barry, and I sit down on the ground, like, I will wait here for you. Ivy, hey, do you have a... And, and Phineas gets so close. We're Listen. like, we're like, I'm sitting cross like we're probably the same height yeah. right now. Listen, I'm, as you can tell, I'm a little, I'm a little bit smaller than you. Um, yes, but that's okay. And big cities like this tend to make me a little nervous. So, honestly, if, if you could come in with us, I'd feel a lot better. With only a few of us, and there's not that many of us, I look at like a massive or massive caravan of people that have come with us. <laughs> <laughs> it's only a few of us. I. I really would feel more comfortable if you came in with us. Is that okay? Can I, I like pull you aside? Come very close. I have a secret for you. Oh, okay. I'm here too. <laughs> oh. You can listen if you'd hey, like. I, I guess I go in sort of near as well. Oh, Althea, like, okay. Well, okay. As I'll, a team huddle. Althea, got, got nice and, I, and, I, and I point at Althea as I'm sitting cross-legged on the ground, is the first person I met. I don't know. I didn't know there were people besides me and Auntie. Why did you leave Auntie? I didn't leave Auntie. Auntie left me. And so you went to go look for her? Yes. Well, in the city, think of it this way, Ivy. There's so many people here, and they have so many eyes, right? And so they can see more that you have such a high opportunity that someone might have bumped into Auntie. Look, Phineas, and I put my hands on your shoulders. You are not making me feel better. Mm. Mm. Look, you're doing a very bad job. Okay. Ivy... Thank you for trying. It's kind of you. But I, I don't want you to think you're doing well. Okay. Well, that's a lesson for me for sure. Ivy, do you want to find Auntie? I do very much want to find Auntie. Well, the more people you meet, the more likely it is that they're Auntie. I cannot not see the logic in that. See? There you go. Okay, come on. And I lift her up. <laughs> I stand up and I'm like, okay. Okay. You make your way to the gate. I'm oh. still standing there. The rest of you start to make your way, and you notice that Ivy has not actually moved. Ivy, you you gonna you gonna you, come with us? You yeah, walk. I, yeah, I'm I'm coming. I'm still standing Maybe there. Maybe we should tie a rope to her. No, no, we don't do so that. that I go her. over and tie a rope around her, and I go, see, you just follow the way that I pull the rope, and I start walking. I lurch and start walking. Perfect. Barry lumbers behind me. Oh yeah. I tie it. I tie the string to Snuggles uh, to his tail. <laughs> oh, so Ivy's always trailing behind Snuggles. Yes. Are the animals going to be an issue for us in the city? We'll find I out. I don't remember there being an issue with animals in Motet when I've visited previously, so I, I wouldn't think so. Is there a problem with uh, animals in Motet? How many times do you bring a giant boar in? Uh, I've never brought any animals into Motet, so how would you know? I, I wouldn't. It's me bullshitting. Confidence <laughs> is key, you guys. Yeah. You get to decide. You decide whether or not you've brought in an animal or not um, to my I, uh, I call in Gregory yep. to my arm and, and whisper to him to find the, the local justice and let him fly off uh, to get uh, to get line of sight on potentially where we're going to speak to, you know. Because we're turning in who's the Perrin, person? and uh, we're asking them to excuse the boy, but we, right. you have agreed to present the boy and that they hope to see and the, the justice. S- right. And the spy. Yes. I do have a question. Mm-hmm. How will an owl know what the justice is? Yeah, it Good seems question. Like a really, really Guys, big my concept. owl is so smart, y'all. Roll an animal handling check. 
Seems like a to big To explain concept. justice system? <laughs> <laughs> That's not what you said. <laughs> you said to find the justice. <laughs> to find the justice. Yep. But I was like, God, that's going to be tough. Brings up Batman. <laughs> 11. Okay. It sails off. <laughs> I, <laughs> do, because I rolled an 11, do I feel like he knows where he's going? <laughs> he feels like I'm he not, knows where I'm he's going. I'm not saying he's going to the right place. Uh, yeah, I think he's got this. <laughs> I'm really excited. To th- I got to throw this wrench in your plan. Oh, don't worry. I had the exact same question. <laughs> oh, boy. Why is your owl flying back towards the forest? <laughs> <laughs> It he's, starts just doing loops over the he's city. Making, he's getting he's getting a better vantage point. You know there might be clouds or starts stuff. moving towards the forest. Okay, well you know maybe he's hungry. He's you can't you can't search on an empty stomach. He'll be back. Okay. So you all head to the gates, and there are two people standing there. They're both wearing these sort of ponchos of green, and they both have spears. Uh, one of them is a woman, probably in her late 20s the other one is a man in his conservatively we will say anywhere from his 50s to jesus christ who knew people got that old um he's loped over very very hunched forward does he have many scars he doesn't have that many scars he's so got he's a weakling he's got he's a never been in battle big tuft of white wow, chin beard well you don't judgmental know. much <laughs> This is happening he, said, in he, his he, head. Said, he said nobody lives that long so i assumed he leans forward to you and he goes I turn to the woman and I go, what? He was asking what brings you to Matet. We're here to um, speak to the local justice um, and bring potentially uh, one, maybe two people to uh, justice. bear any justice. That's what you're doing? What did he say? <laughs> she points to uh, Quatra and to Ivy and says, you're bringing these two to justice? No, these no. are our companions. Uh, two of the people in our caravan are being brought to justice. Oh, yes, they tied me up to be kind. Oh, yes. we. She was a little nervous. Doesn't but get out much. You're traveling with elves and going on purpose and going with elves into Matet. We brought elves into Matet and... What yeah. did he say? The woman nods. Yes, asking about bringing elves what's, to Matet. What's wrong with bringing elves into Matet? The man goes... <laughs> He thinks it's your funeral. What? It, I turn to Phineas and I go, what the fuck is he talking about? I don't know. I don't remember. To be honest, I'm not an elf and I haven't run into any issues when I've been to Matet previously, so I guess I didn't think about he it. He rolled a 20 on his history. How would he want not? You know? guys remember that there was a there was a war that was recently resolved with uh, the alliance uh, between the elves and the... Like, this just happened. Remember how they switched from the barony to Talim? Mm, that's right. Mm-hmm. So now they are. Now this place, as of is three, occupied by three Talim? days ago, is. Oh, you know what? Of... I thought the village was occupied, Talim. I didn't know Matet was also occupied. Okay. By it, it seems that way. Ah, so it extended more than just that small village. Well, to be fair, it probably started here, and as an extension of that. Gotcha. I have an idea. Turn to everybody, companions, and group of travelers. Uh, who here has? Um, uh, like a like a cloak or a shawl that we can use. And Phineas raises his hand. I can disguise one of you, and I have some extra cloaks if needed. Cool, that would be great. You don't need to necess. Oh well, yeah. I mean, Ivy's more important, but yeah. I mean, disguising me to look more like a tiefling would be it's great. Okay. Quatra. Why am I more important? You're important. All of, all, all of you are important. I can also stand here along with you to make sure nobody gives yeah, you any yeah, trouble on the road. We're just we're just making. Some I quick... don't want to go with them. I don't. I'm not worried yes, about them. You. No. Would this be is not. So... Yeah, it's your job. You gotta go with them. Make sure there's no trouble with them in the day. See, uh, that would be. What is your name? My name is Valeria. Valeria, we would so appreciate a guarded escort. This is not my job. It's your job to keep peace in the city. The jail's going to the town. You're not going to have peace in the city. You're going to keep in trouble of them. I mean, he's got a point. You know, I also think that. See, I told you. Are you making fun of him? She meant that as a compliment. We would really appreciate your help because clearly we've come here with maybe some of the wrong expectations. And I know Matet is known for being, I mean, an all-around safe and gracious city. So could you help us? Okay. Here's the thing. Okay. So Althea goes up to Valeria Mm -hmm. and she goes, look, 
You're a cop. I'm a... Used to be a cop. You know? Right. Our duty is to our towns. Our duty is to the right thing. I do not... We have to bring these criminals to justice. Wouldn't... What criminals? It's not the elves. You're talking about something else. No, we have a couple of, like, ne'er-do-wells that we gotta turn into the justice. Are you bounty hunters? You know, we just sort of fell into it. It's not like we go looking for it. A giant ice man told us to capture them. You know what? She's a child, and I, like, push her behind me. And she doesn't really know anything about the world. Just, you know. <sighs> This is not how I wanted to spend my day. You know what's not how I wanted she, to spend my day either, but guess we're in the same boat. One turns cop around, to another. She turns around and wraps the door with her spear, and it begins to creak open. She turns to the man and says, "You owe me for this." I don't think you are both in the Dunn house, and this is about to have it. What he said. As we're walking in, I, I turn to Quatra and I take one of my like other cloaks and I wrap it around his head. Mm-hmm. Quatra, yeah, we're just gonna need to be extra stealthy, so you cannot look like an elf. Is that okay? So I should wear a turban. No, I'm just kind of covering up your ear area. That's usually a pretty dead giveaway. Also, I'm trying to put a little bit more shade around you. You've got a very chiseled and sharp jaw, so I'm trying to soften mm-hmm. that up a little bit with the shadows. Are you okay with that? Yeah, so I'd like some lipstick as well. I, I don't have that, but we could certainly grab some. It's a very large city. Ivy. Yes. I'm going to have to... Uh, I, I trust that you're going to be yourself in any city that you're in, which means I am going to have to... You know, give you a little bit of a, a, a magical makeover. Let's call it. I'm not. Sh- what do you mean? Uh, what what other what other? I I, mean, I, I I just changed. I, I I turned to blue recently. Yes, and that's and that's a very um uh good. exciting and good thing. But also, good things draw attention, and we right now want to keep that off of us. So. I'm going to disguise you like a game, and you're going to look like somebody else. Are you I, okay with that? I. I have you ever played pretend? I feel like you're both speaking down to me. No, 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 no. We're not. Uh, I'm trying to explain. Okay. <laughs> Let me put it this way. In the last town we were in, have you ever seen anybody else in the town and you've wondered, man, I wonder what their life is like? Like their, re- their regular day-to-day life? I wonder what everyone's life is like. I wonder what your life is like. I wonder what uh, what Althea's life is like. I- How do you feel about looking like, you know, me or uh, or somebody else in our party? Maybe not Quattro. Maybe not no. uh, Althea. Maybe. No. maybe not you. What about looking just like me? <gasps> I have a... Want to be twins for a day? Oh, I love it. Re- real quick. Twinsies. Real quick. Is this for safety? Yes. Why didn't you say so? Uh, yeah, I probably should have lived with that. That was my bad. I apologize. You uh, are a, a, a very important member of this party, and I have been speaking to you in the wrong capacity. I apologize, Ivy. That's my fault. Okay, for safety. For safety it is. Uh, and I cast Disguise Self on hey, Ivy. Hey, Jay, what's the range on Disguise Self? do 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 It's self. Weird. Huh. Oh, no. So you know. can disguise Okay, so instead, yourself. I think about that, and Did I go, you know what? we have that entire conversation? And then <laughs> wait, 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 like, wait. wait. <laughs> no, I got this, though. I think about it, and I'm like, that's a terrible idea. Um, instead, I keep silent image basically loaded in the barrel uh, because it only lasts up to 10 minutes. True. So I'm going to wait until we're in probably like a densely populated area where it looks fairly dangerous. Um, and I'm going to keep it locked in for uh, well, if need be. As okay. soon as the doors open, you are in a market. Okay. Um, immediately. As I would like to, what, what he was doing, like as he was kind of going through all that, I was, um, I, as he was talking to me the whole time, I was undoing my braids, mm-hmm. undoing them all, and then I just tucked my ears under my hair. Mm. Oh, that also helps. Yeah, but, but you're also completely blue. blue. Is that the is that the problem? I mean, yeah. I mean, okay. I, so I, she, I was well, confused. You said it was Quattro's ears. Well, just we'll say she's an ear genasi. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Uh, yeah. And you don't want to be a fire genasi. You want to be known as a tiefling. In this yeah. City. Because so air genasi then. Yeah. Are you good with that, Ivy? Sure. If that is what's safe, I can do that. Just be like light and airy and shit. Forgive me, but I haven't spent a lot of time with elves. Are you an elf? No, I'm a fire genasi. Oh, I wasn't sure. I I'm really not. I, there was no other elves at the temple. 
Oh, interesting. So you don't. Oh. I'm from another you, plane of existence. It's so beyond the point. Do you Let's all want to come in? Yeah, we're coming. It's okay, Quatra. I didn't know I was an elf until they told me I was. You're an elf. Thank you. Uh, it was a question. Oh. She's an elf. <laughs> Boy, it's awfully busy in this market. We should get a move on. Ooh, the hustle and bustle. Here we go. City. <laughs> Welcome to Friday Night Quests. It's me, Mike Christensen, your host, and also your dungeon master. Welcome to Act 2. Um, we are excited for this new adventure, this new story, and we are excited about another little announcement, just a little something. I don't know if you saw it on our social media or if you've been following us on, you know, whatever, but the Patreon is live. Wow. Mike, make sure to add in some air horn sound so it's not just my voice. Just do something that makes it sound a little less nerdy than that um the patreon exists you can help support the show by contributing at patreon.com slash friday night quests all one word if you back us at two dollars a month you gain access to the bardic inspiration tier and that's where we will read your name aloud on the show um if you back us at the five dollars a month level you get access to detect magic. That's a first level spell, y'all, and that is when you get to hear all the bonus audio and see the bonus Dungeon Master notes. And that is where you get the real sweet stuff. Uh, thank you so much for supporting the show. We are so thankful to anybody who donates. Uh, we're going to start calling out some names in future episodes, but once again, we want to give a huge shout out and a thank you to everyone who has come over to the page and everyone who is planning on doing so um, to help support the show. If you're not able to financially support us, we totally understand. We just request that you um, support the show another way. You can leave us a rating and review on iTunes. Every five-star review, uh, not just a rating, but a review, really helps the show find new listeners. If you use the word chosen in your review by, let's say, end of February, because that's what I said before, so let's say it again. If you use the word chosen in your review, we are going to give you a shout out on the show. And if you use it the best way in a way that I decide later on, once I decide how I'll decide, then we are going to give you a super bonus double shout out. I don't know. We'll say it nicer. We'll do a nice thing. It'll be very sweet and very organic and not at all weird. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, we will be back with you again on March 4th. In the meantime, check out the rest of this episode for more episode. These mid-rolls, guys, I think we can all agree, they're excellent. First take. Got it in one. Right, Jay? Jay? Jay, right? Jay? Hey, Jay. Hey, Jay's in the room with me. Yes, huh? you got it! Yeah! A green light. Uh, all right, guys, I'll see you um, uh, later. Kick some ass, take some names. Bye! You walk into this very populated area. This is an active street area where it, you realize this is not the market. This whole level is just this way. Like it's people bustling around, it's shops. There's some residences that are not in the best shape. Everybody make perception checks as you're going through. 17 for Phineas. I also got a 17. Nine. Eight. Okay. Nine and eight. You two notice some interesting things that the others are going to notice as well, but I'm going to give Jay and Amanda some extra details about other things. You notice that there are aqueducts running from the top level down through the rest of the city. This is inherently very strange as you are, as noted, on top of a rock in the middle of a salt flat right next to a desert, and the water is running down from what looks like the top level of the city. That is inherently very, very strange. So... What, essentially, water would be pumped up to the top and down, but what, where would they get the water from? Exactly. Okay. The other thing that you notice is that there's fresh fish for sale mm -hmm. on the street corners. I would never eat fresh fish in the desert. <laughs> it seems like not the place to get it. It would not be fresh. <laughs> um, I'd like you both. To, I'd like you all to make nature checks as well, oh. actually. Okay. Ivy, you don't need to. You're going to know this pretty much automatically as soon as you look at the fish. Phineas got a four. Fish or water animals? <laughs> Twelve. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you get? Uh, 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 nature? Uh, mm, 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 19. 19. 
Uh, these fish are all very large okay. and blind. blind. You can tell by the design of their eyes. These are these are fish that are not designed to see light. I would not know that. Those, you you didn't, didn't pick up on that. Okay. No. Those fish can't see. Not not because they're dead. Hmm. Um, Do they have eyes? They have very very small eyes, like almost like basically like they've been evolutionarily phased out, mm. and yeah. they're like on their way out. They eyeless don't see. fish, essentially. Um, well, blind fish on their way to being eyeless. Oh, okay. Like in a few generations, they may not have eyes at mm. all. Do any of these stalls allow people to taste uh, a sample? Yeah. yeah, you can. I'd like to taste a sample. Oh, me too. Oh, no, yeah. what? You, you have a little cube of swordfish. Oh, I gobble it down. It's good. It tastes like mm. fresh fish. Like you, you're from a coastal area, mm. and you would. This is not that different from what you would taste. Mm. You don't have a lot of fish where I'm. This from. is very good fish. It is. It is very mm. good, isn't it? Um, mm-hmm. Phineas and Ivy, you notice... I'll take eight of your fish. <laughs> um, you notice <coughs> that stenciled on one of the walls is graffiti of a lily that's been burnt, and there are some people trying to scrub it off. Mm. And the lily is the symbol of Talim, if I'm correct. The lily unburnt, yes. Yeah. Can I tell how long like, the lily's been there? Probably less than a day. Okay. Um, yeah, you can give a couple gold to get as much fish as you would like, essentially. Yes, I'd like eight fish, please. Yeah, one gold. Okay. You're going to carry around eight fish. Well, I mean, I'll eat some. Yes, I mean, we're going to need to eat at some point today. What? I mean, just, okay. You are led through this wide, winding road. Help, help me hold these fish. We have a cart. <laughs> yeah, I'll Absolutely grab a Absolutely <laughs> not. <laughs> don't we have, a, we have a cart, don't we? Oh, okay, yeah. good. What I mean, we... I'll hold them if you'd like me to. Uh, please, I could use the help. I'm holding four fish. <laughs> <laughs> One of the things that you notice is that this road, much like how Althea has referenced this from her place, there is two lane traffic um, on this winding road, but there's a third lane. You made a reference to lanes at one point, and Quattro joked like, oh, there's traffic. Oh, oh, I don't remember that. Okay. Fair enough. I don't remember most things that come out of my mouth. But I'm glad the listener did. Yeah. <laughs> well, if they didn't, uh, I've established there is traffic. Um, but there's a third lane in the center that no one uses. Hmm. It is, and no one seems the to be... The city has invented a third lane. <laughs> no one Whoa. seems to walk through it or across it. There are actually bridges that for people to cross Finally, the, the bike road. lane we've been wanting. Yeah, right? Do, do we see, like, any... Is there anything in this quote unquote third lane of like like a rail or any type of string or rope or uh, nope to designate some does, type well, of Well Phineas, th- you've been here before. What is this lane for? Make a history check. I'll give you advantage on that. Advantage? One. Damn, that's that a bad. loud die. Ooh, that was very good. That was a sixteen plus it's probably a negative. Da, 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 da. Yep. Yeah. Uh so fifteen for history. Uh it's not a difficult one to realize. This is the Baron's lane. Um, the mm. idea being that the whole city is constructed, that he can travel all the way from the palace through the entire city and while going on the same road, pass through every part of the city. Does the length of the rope that's uh, tied around me allow me to reach the lane? Uh, probably just barely. Okay. Um, I try to like kind of like step in it. Uh, Valeria <clears throat> puts her spear out like in front of you, not as like a threatening gesture, yeah. but like she's basically blocking your path. She says, no, no, no one crosses through that lane. If you want to cross, you go across one of the overhead bridges. And you see there are these walkways that lead over the road at certain points. So you literally points. can't cross. So, like, U-turns are out of the question in this city. Yeah. Like, you, you pick have your to... lane and you go. Exactly. Mm. Oh, boy. Um, you also notice, as you're first walking in, there is a large temple immediately to your left, just past a couple buildings, that rises up high enough that it has access on the next level. There's, like, this, you know, 50-foot wall... It's, so it's wood. a multi-tiered tall temple. Yeah, well, yeah, it's the level here and the level above. You yeah. can tell from the iconography. Um, I would like everyone but Quatra and Ivy to make religion checks. Quatra, you know this. <coughs> mm. Ivy, you don't. I got a 17 for religion. I got a 10. All right. Um, Phineas and Quatra, this is a temple to Kavosha. Hmm. Kavosha is the god of war, Mm-mm. a bitter rival of Velosa. Oh. Yeah. Hmm. Because Velosa... I angrily grip my fish. Who's yeah. Velosa? Velosa's my temple. The god of my oh. temple. The goddess of my temple. Oh. She's yeah. a nature god. Yeah. Have goddess you shared of with me who, you're, who you worship at your temple? She oh. mentioned, he mentioned the goddess of Velosa. The temple of Velosa. I have pamphlets. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you very much. Um, oh, I would like Are one. you okay, Quatra? Uh, but, I mean, yes. But I'm 
it angers me to be near so near a temple that profanes my goddess. And actually, something that you would both know about Kavosha, Kavosha is a rival of Velosa, but Kavosha's followers profane all All gods. the other gods. The way that, like, Kavosha doesn't have a distinct appearance. They don't have a physical description. They don't have a gender. They don't have any of that. They have no iconography of themselves. You you deify, you make an icon for them by maiming an icon to another god. Mm. So nice. So you, nice of Kavosha. So is that kind of like when you like scribble like a mustache and double horns on something? It's when you, you mm-hmm. specifically you smash off the hand, the left hand, and you put an axe into the chest. Oh, mm. boy. And whatever you get after that, whether it breaks apart and there's nothing left but the feet or you don't even make a dent like yeah i'm a feet is... man if i'm gonna do it i mean i'm going feet as well right <laughs> no sounds... i mean like if it's like the straight up like if it's like a hollow like piece of pottery you smash off the hand and you put an axe through the center you might break all of it but now it is an icon to kavosha mm. hmm. it disgusts me anybody would worship war well i i could totally get why you're upset especially because you know it sounds like they're i not... lost my appetite for these fish I mean, I'll take them if you don't want them. Yes, uh, they're actually heavy here. Oh, What's yeah. war? Oh, wow, they are very heavy. <laughs> oh, Ivy, we don't have time. So they keep War's walking. a very bad thing. With my history check previously, do I know, like, if Kavosha is, like, what do I know of the justice system of the Huang Barony? Like, is it there? There are religion-based? There, there is a different religious temple for justice. This is the, hey, the armies are on their way out. On the way out of the city, they're going to get a blessing from the war god at the door. Mm, okay. So that's why it's placed mm. right there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So there are there is there are other temples in the city. There are two others. Uh, one to Justice and one to uh, to Helmia, the goddess of the sun. I was in before. the military, so <laughs> yeah. So you know firsthand how terrible war is. Well, it's not like the first choice, but sometimes it's the necessary choice. War is never necessary. So, uh, I guess we should go uh, to that Temple of Justice, I right? I agree. Yeah, Valeria leads you to the, about halfway through this section, she refers to this as the common quarter. And this is the section that you're in. It's by far the mm-hmm. largest section of the city. And leads you to a large town square, in the center of which there's a 90-foot high pillar with a brass bowl on top with the burning fire, the beacon fire. But it's Talim. But it's Talim. It's a green fire with a golden lily in the center. And you notice a few things. You notice there's a lot of trade here. This is actually one of the only places where people are able to cross, uh, mostly because you can't actually stop them from crossing in this section. Like, you just, for business, you actually have to. They're crossing the third lane. This is the only area where they Uh. cross the third lane. Um, You also notice there's a small display, like a a pop-up cart that turned into a little stage, and there's a bunch of children standing around it. And there's a man standing on this stage, and he's got this large, sort of white, paper mache object next to him. It looks kind of like a tooth. And it's got these shadows playing across it. This man in robes, probably in his 40s, with hair that's starting to gray, but he's human, um, is gesturing to it and says, There are dangers across that you cannot even detect <gasps> with your eyes. You don't know them until it's too late, and the damage is irreversible. These are called, and he gestures, and one of them inflates and turns into this sort of green goblinoid creature. Plaque and tartar decay. Mm. There is nothing you can do uh, unless you purchase one of these, and he pulls out a toothbrush. You have all, except everyone but Ivy has seen a toothbrush before. We need to get that. We and have he, to. He says, now, this may seem an ordinary toothbrush, but I, Garmatar, the tooth, Wizard would sell you no ordinary toothbrush. No, friends, I can tell you of a time before your parents' parents where you could walk into any shop in any city and purchase magical items. Now, these Halcyon days are long gone, but I bring this power to you now. You, for the low, low price of an affordable, affordable one month's rent, can purchase a magical item. Witness! And he holds up the toothbrush, and it begins to vibrate. Hmm. Oh my god! He... A vibrating toothbrush. He invented a quip. I, I I run up to him 
And I'm like, sir. You start pushing through the children. I, I pull the rope I do, back. Like, I, like, I, I still go. And I'm like, sir, I beg of you. I have no money, but please have pity on me. I need this. I have no. If you need to purchase, all you need to do is line up at the booth. And he starts directing. Mostly it's the moms who are like taking their kids over. Um, a lot of the moms seem to be buying two of them. This man is a fraud. <laughs> This man is a fraud. Whoa, 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 whoa. And I run up to Quattro. Hey, listen, this listen. This man what? is a no, fraud. No, 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 Look, no, no, he's no, no, just, no, no, no. He's, he's just, just trying to, he's just trying to make a living. It could be magic. A we piece don't know. of lemon root will clean your teeth just fine. I don't Not see why. A piece everyone. of lemon root cannot get the cleaning power that my patented Garmatar brush can. Yep. Garmatar. Are, total- are we just talking about cleaning teeth? Yes. Of course. You said they were monsters. These creatures on your teeth, you cannot... See, you cannot know the danger. Yes. And he's still holding this vibrating toothbrush. It sort of undercuts what he's saying. Don't let can him I, like, scare you. Can I try to grab it from him? Uh, make an acrobatics check. That's a natural 20. Yeah, you grab it. I have it. Ah, well, that's merchandise. It's a, it's a one gold for that. One gold. She only has fish hooks. Oh, I left my fish hooks. Well. I, I think I, I, I have some stones. I hold, out, I hold out like a really particularly shiny rock. Does she have an adult with her? I am an adult. Don't yeah, I, I, how much is it? One gold. I don't want For this. the brush. It's a, you, then you please sure? give it back. But you are, Quattro said you are lying. I take the toothbrush out of her hand and I give it back to him. I'm like, sir, I'm sorry we have disturbed you. We need to go now, everybody. And I start walking in the direction we need to go. I lurch along as she still has the rope tied to me. Uh, everyone make perception checks. 16. 12 for Phineas. Mm-hmm. 15. Sorry, I'm trying to math. 18. Um, as Ivy was getting into that argument, one of her ears came untucked. You look across the plaza, and near the pillar, you see like five or six men and women gathered together who have noticed this. I quickly put it back under my hair. Mm-hmm. I rolled a 12, so I probably don't notice that they noticed this. Did you I- noticed that the ear, ear came untucked. You did not uh, okay. notice the... Uh, did anybody it. else notice the people? Uh, who got the 18? I got the 18. I got a 16. Both of you would notice that. I tried to go, oh, come on, everybody. We need to go. We need to go now. Oh, and yeah. I start like huddling everyone together. Yeah, for the first time, I like am very purposeful in like my movement. Um, hey, for what it's worth, good good performance, man. I, I really appreciated it. Oh, thank you. I'm... Classically trained, but you, you go where the job is. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm on my way. Um, yeah, you're actually not very far from the temple to Carsos, the god of war, uh, god of justice. Okay. Uh, so we approach like it's our- another multi-level temple. It goes up to the second level. I think we're here. So uh, I'll get Octavia. Uh, does somebody want to grab Perrin and the boy as well? I mean, we do have to bring him in. I'll I, grab him. I will. I will lead the boy. Okay. So I grab Octavia. I do. Um, Real quick. Um, uh, obviously, okay, I have a question. Yeah. If Amanda knows something, but Ivy doesn't, how do we go about that? What is the thing? I guess it's a case by case. Yeah. Um, in this case, isn't Octavia, like, isn't she technically no longer a spy? Like, isn't she, like, supposed to be a member of this, like, city now? Because, like, it didn't, like, it change. Right. But. So we're, she's still tied up. We're bringing We're her hoping her. that there's still some, you know. But why? Prejudice. <laughs> Be- but like, are we like bringing like like someone who we're seeing as a spy to somebody who probably hired her? Potentially, we don't know what if the justice system here is usurped, as in like they like removed all the judges and like brought in Talim judges, which we should ferret out and figure out before we go in. Yeah. Or it could be local judges who are just required, quote unquote, to do the justice that Talim asks, but they might be, you know. They might call it a fair judgment for someone who is spying on another village, regardless of whether it was Talim or not. I feel like that's a very heavy bet that we are making. We'll take a bet, and we'll like we'll figure it out as we go. We won't necessarily bring her forward until we need to. Okay, I'm just like worried like she might speak out, she might say something. Mm-hmm. The challenge is we have to. We promised an ice knight that we would bring True. these people yeah. to justice. Now, if they excuse these people, because he assured us. They're no longer. He assured you that he would honor the Baron's wishes. And the Baron. And if the Baron, and the Baron's deposed. not in charge anymore. If the Baron is siding with Talim, mm. then we still fulfill our Wait, yep. okay. promise to the knight. Same. Same. I agree. Okay. Mm-hmm. 
I just want to make sure we're not like accidentally like walking into like something that's going to go very bad for us. Oh, I mean, things are always going to go very bad for us. This is D&D. You are correct. But Amanda, I do believe you've made a good point, even though I know you're not speaking as Ivy right now, (laughs) um, that we might want to leave Octavia in the, you know, caravan and only bring in the boy and the girl. Let's Uh, do that for now. I don't think we should leave the spy alone. That that too, yeah. Well, you also have uh, Jinhee. With you, and if you well, Valeria is probably going to walk with you. Well, inside, what does Jin He want to do? Considering that Jin He wants to keep going down the road and, and get all the way to the Palace of Peace and see her father. Well, then Jin He can watch the spy. Okay, unless we should go to the father first. The thing is, we promised the Ice Knight, and we felt like at the time that the Ice Knight would know if we did something that we said we wouldn't do. We said we would bring the spy to justice. Well, what if we brought the spy to the Baron first to discern what justice that is? I think that might be the right play. Here's the thing, though. The spy is going to be like, yeah, I'm part of your team, team Talim all day, every day, high fives all around. Guess who knocked me out, kidnapped me, and dragged me all the way to your city? These four arrest these four. We all go to jail. But the but the Baron may not necessarily side with them. Like well, that's I, the thing we got to check in first. I are these judges Talim judges or are they Baron judges? We well we need them to be Baron judges, so we should go to the Baron. How do first. we ask that in a way that's not sketchy as fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, you all you guys all down with them Talim so, fools? Or I <laughs> might have a spy, but <laughs> how about you guys? Just are, asking for a friend. You cool? You cool? Let's go to. I think we should go to the Baron. I agree. I well, agree. let's let's handle these. You mean go straight up to the tip top yep. of the city? Yep. Well, let's give the, let's give the uh, Perrin let's give Perrin to the um, justice first. That was the plan. Well, what, yes, that we were going to bring him to justice. I think we should go. To, the Baron will give us the direction of what what justice is here. Sorry, like I was. So, I'm fine. I so just forgot Va- about that. So did Valeria <laughs> tell us this is where you would bring somebody? She thinks you're bounty hunters. You've not. Oh. You've, you have not okay, obviously so explained to me. Is she taking us to the equivalent of the sheriff's office? Essentially. Okay. So Carsos, the Temple of Carsos, is the sheriff's. It's sheriff's. the law. Okay. Here's okay. We are, we are running a very big risk here, because if they are Talim sided, we are going to drop a. I don't care about Perrin, but we're going to drop <laughs> a. <laughs> we're going to drop Story this young Perrin's boy life. in front of these people and say that he killed a Talim. You know, that's why we need to go to the Baron first. I I agree. I agree with okay. all three. Yeah, I don't yes. like going to. The I think we're sh- running too high a risk here. That's what yeah. I've been saying. <laughs> yeah, okay. it's this huge- guys. I just came up with this idea. <laughs> Glad you listened to me. From a well, actually. Is okay. Where man gets <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> ah, wait. Better high five. There we go. Nice. That was a good high five. Thank you. So, okay. So course as- correct, Valeria. We're actually we want to um actually take a look at the uh palace. Of Matet? Yes, that's not a question. We would like to go to the palace first. Why in the world would I bring you to the palace? And uh, Jin He says, uh, I'm, I'm the Baron's daughter. I was going to say that, but yes. The, yes. Ah. All right, follow me. <laughs> Easy enough. Whoopo! Um, burr, 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 burr. As, as Phineas slides. A bit of honeycomb back into his bucket. <laughs> <laughs> we good, we good, we good. You continue through this winding road and you pass this large temple that, again, leads up to the second level that you know as the Temple to Helmia. You can tell by the design. It's painted in That's gold. That's my girl, right? That's your girl. Hi. It's even got these different spokes leading hey, out of the... Hey, girl. <laughs> Wink face. It's got these spokes leading out that almost evoke... Is the statue sunbeams? just someone like th- finger guns yeah, down at you? Yeah, Helmia is like the queen of finger guns. <laughs> it's Buddy Christ? <laughs> yes. <laughs> she's like, you got this, girl. Yeah. But she's like a it's fully canon. armored the DM woman. Said it. Yeah. It's canon. The yeah. DM said it, guys. <laughs> Wait, uh, what's Helmia the god of? Uh, sun. Uh, goddess. goddess. Goddess of sun, the hearth, and sick and props. Well, she's one Sick of the and fucking fire genasi. And you head to these stairs, these wide stairs that are, and then a ramp as well in the center of them that allow carts to travel up. Oh, you travel up it through so modern through a gate, and into. Did you like make a holy symbol or something when you passed? Yeah, it's like the like in Avatar: Last Airbender. It's like the fire, like it's the mm. fist with the yeah, the, the fist with the hand on top Hotman? of it. Hotman, mm. Hotman, 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 Flamio, Flamio, Hotman. <laughs> you enter into what you can pretty quickly tell is a very densely populated poverty area. 
Mm. This is on the second level, and it's right around where the Temple to Helmia is. Why is the Temple to Helmia surrounded by the destitute? And uh, Valeria shrugs and says, they take in the strays. Is well, that something so, that I would know? Like, is that a Helmia she, thing? I mean, she's a protector. I guess it just depends oh, okay. on the it depends on the church yeah, at a certain okay, point. Okay. Well, it's, it's good to hear that they have a, a place where they can find some support. I As you're saying this, someone just dumps out a bucket of, like, piss and oh. stuff out the window, and it just splatters onto the ground. I want to see if there's something, like, you know, not right about this situation. Sure. Make an uh, insight check. Uh, Mike, I believe it's called an economics check. <laughs> You're not far off. I mean, 90% tax for the rich. Um, insight, you yep. said? Okay. Mike, um, would I know if Helmia has a um, like martial arts equivalent of me? Make a religion or history check. I rolled a 14. Okay. 12. Okay. Um, with that, I don't think you would know. Okay. Um, 14. Well, one of the things that Valeria mentions that like this whole second level, the whole second tier is called the culture ward, but she refers to this area as the uncultured ward. Wow. Um, it's sort of like this sort of running joke in the city. You just kind of get the sense that like this is where the poor know that they can find some solace. Okay. This is also... It's a little bit of like a Hell's Kitchen, Chelsea sort of like. Yeah. There's there's some artsy stuff. The tenderloin. I mean, there's like some arts here as well, oh, okay. but like this is the low end of it. This is off off Broadway. Okay. Some good microbrews. There's some real good microbrews. Probably like a nice little art walk. Yes. I mean, look, if there's some like small batch fire whiskey, I'm down for it. <laughs> exactly. And as you turn a corner and you pass right by where the Temple of Carsos is, it becomes. Beverly Hills. Oh. Um, it is now, suddenly, this is where you go for the shows and for the arts and for, the, well, that's not really Beverly Hills, but the shopping as well. Um, we know what you mean. You know what I mean. And you are led through the culture ward. Um, perception checks from everyone. Culture ward. That's where I want to Oh, be. no, a six. That is insufficient. Wait, what kind of check are we doing? Perception. perception. 15 for Phineas. 16. Nine. Uh, Ivy, you recognize that the people who noticed your ear was untucked have followed you into this ward. Shit. And they're following you. Mm. Y'all, y'all right there? Yeah, we're being followed by those who saw me earlier. Wait, what do you mean those who saw you earlier? Yeah, what are you talking about? You saw this something. We kind of... Oh, yeah, that's right. Those people. Um, so I turn to uh, Valeria and I go, Look, Valeria, we're being followed. You're the peacekeeper in this town. What did we do? She looks back at them. They won't be able to follow into the noble quarter. You should be fine. I give like a little wave to them. Do you recognize them at all? They look like veterans. What? Veterans, veterans of, of what? The war with the elves. Cool. So oh, let's keep cool, cool, uh, cool. Ivy. Just stay. I, like, they... oh, like, I, like, I, like, I already waved before they said that. So what do you want to wave at them? You waved at them? No, why would you do that? They can't follow us, she said. Oh my god, you've taunted them. Don't taunt veterans. I didn't know. They actually, as soon as you wave at them, they just sort of slip into the crowd and try to make themselves unseen. All right. Okay. Okay, Ivy, stay. Can I, like, can I like, roll to like, watch where they went? Yeah, make a perception check. Uh, unnatural 20. Oh, yeah, you beat their very low stealth check. Uh, it seems like they're kind of backing off. Okay. Uh, they were make... kind of counting on not being spotted. Okay, I still make like, a mental note of like, where I saw them go. Yes, very much so. Ivy, stay between us if you can. Yes. Okay. I mean... It's not much of a between since I you're feel, very short, but I feel a little better. Can we untie me? No. No. That hurts my feelings. What's sorry, you instigated people. So, uh Did you wave with both of your hands tied? No, I, it's around my. It's a, it's yeah, a, oh, that's it's right. Like, it's around your waist. It's a child like, leash. Like, <laughs> you know, Amanda was a leash kid. Oh, nice. Uh, okay, so what do we do when we do we make our way to Art the noble court? Life. Yeah, you pass by the second level of the Temple of Kavosha. Um, you see that it looks like there's a statue of uh, the Mountain Father Kamandul is out front, but obviously it's been venerated for Kavosha by having the left hand smashed and an axe 
plunged into the uh, the chest. The axe is not there anymore, but there's a very distinctive axe print. Are there people up there like remolding it right now? No, no. That's how they. That's how you make a statue to Kavosha. Is you no, f- I know, yeah. but is the city like trying to fix it? Oh Just no, no. Clearly it's there's, not there. There's there's no religion for the Mountain Father here. Like this is not his jam. Mm. So they don't like, and also like that's their that's their bailiwick. Like this is how they celebrate their god. And if, if they bless you before you go into war, you don't really care how they get their icons. Fair enough. Unless they happen to be, you know, your icons. But that's their property. Presumably they bought it. Hmm. Or they stole it off a battlefield. Okay. You pass around. You pass through the distinctive noble fence to go into the noble quarter. Mike, what, okay, real quick. Uh, I know we all know what this is, but yeah. what is the noble fence? Well, the noble fence comes from uh, season four of the first campaign. Oh, yeah. When there was a lot of confusion whether we were indoors or outdoors. <laughs> I'm oh, glad boy. that we established this is a real thing. Yeah, what it, what is the noble fence? It is something that distinguishes, like, literally, the, the noble, the people who are not nobles cannot go through it. Okay. Hmm. I mean, they, they physically can, but they are not allowed through. Cool. Mike, you're a treat. <laughs> it's called reincorporation. <laughs> nice. Yeah, but you're a real treat. Thank you. Yeah, we uh, like you. Aw. We'll see how long that lasts. Inspiration. Uh, inspiration. <laughs> inspiration. Um, <laughs> I said it first. Do You it. travel into the noble quarter, and this is... Basically, like, two dozen houses, and that's mm. it. And they are manor-sized. But they're really small. No, I'm kidding. Yeah. <laughs> they are manor-sized homes, um, and, again, they are, like, multi-level at this point. They are taking up, like, it seems like you are in a very basic residential area. Mm-hmm. Like, this is now the Bel Air. Well, I think we're getting pretty close to the barony at this point. Yep. Uh, shall we? Yeah. Okay. And you continue through this quarter. Again, it takes, like six minutes to get through this section of town and you rise up another ramp past the stairs to the palace of peace you pass through these tall pillars that rise up in this section and you see ahead of you this large palace covered in reds and golds and blues Althea yes thank you for not untying me you're welcome and Valeria is leading you forward, and Jin He sort of says, Home sweet home. And continues to walk. Jin He, are you okay, by the way? You... She looks up at the walls, and you see that hanging on the walls are icons of Talim. Uh-huh. They're, they're banners of green with the golden lily on them. Jin He, um. I don't know yet. What was your. and your family's relationship with Talim before now. War? For about uh, about 70 years. But what was, you know, was there a uh, let's call it a mutual respect for the honors of war? Or... Oh, uh, yeah. Okay, there wasn't any dirty deeds done between parties. No. Not Not that you know of. Not that I'm aware of, no. Okay, so they would treat you with respect if they... For whatever reason, usurped this city. Correct. Aye, aye, no one would mind an heir of a conquered area coming back with fighters at her side. Ginny, do you want to step behind us? Maybe take some. Um... I, I, I think that might be wise. She seems like she's having a little trouble breathing. Just... It's all right. I put my sh- hand on her shoulder and I go, "It's okay. Just breathe with me." <sighs> if you'd like, um, like you can. I have the other end of my rope. I can tie it around you. Uh, it helped me. I'm, I'm, I'm all right. I don't think <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm fine. Um. Yeah, it's all right. Okay, it's okay to be at the end of your rope. <laughs> Oof. Burr, 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 burr. Guys, that's a show. Wow. <laughs> we, we made it there. That's a perfect time for a five minute break. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's the end of an episode. <laughs> Jesus. Thanks for listening to Friday Night Quests. Your heroes will return in two weeks. Ivy is played by Amanda Joy Condon. You can follow her on Twitter and Tumblr at Amanda Joy. That's spelled a man. Duh. Joy. Althea is played by Hillary Levi, who is on Twitter at Hillary Levi. Phineas is played by Jay Jones, who can be found on Twitter at Jones and on the podcasts Roll the Seas and Wrath and Glory. Quatra is played by Jeremy Fox, who can be found on Twitter at Jay Lee Fox. My name is Mike, and I am on Twitter at SuperGeekMike. Special thanks to Kyle Fryer for composing our theme song. 
You can follow him on SoundCloud for other totally radical music. This episode also included music by Kevin McLeod of Incompetech.com. You can find the track listing and credits in the show notes. This episode also included ambient sound from TabletopAudio.com. If you'd like to support the show, you can head to Patreon.com slash Friday Night Quests and send a little bit of money our way to help keep the lights on and help us keep making this very cool show that we like to do. Photos and character art can be found in the show notes on PartialArc.com. And while you're there, you should check out some of our other podcasts. I recommend Wrath and Story, a hilarious RPG show set in the Warhammer 40k universe. If you have any questions about the show, you can email us at FridayNightQuests at gmail.com. You can also follow us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and Tumblr at PartialArc. Thanks for listening, and until next time, play fair and have fun. Sorry, first, that's the more mother.